Okay, I actually erroneously clicked end recording when the dog was barking, but um, here we are anyway. It, it, fine enough, I suppose, because it was getting to be a bit of a longer thing, um, but we don't have too much more time to go on this. But since we are starting anew here, I suppose I'll click some other article off of this. So we we're talking bad, salt marsh cord grass, um, or Spartina alterniflora. And we're down as, at the problems uh, as an invasive species. Um, so yeah, they can crowd out native species, reducing biodiversity and altering the environment. As a result, S. alterniflora's growth in vertebrates, uh, as a result, oh sorry, as a result of its growth, invertebrates that live in mudflats disappear as their habitat is overgrown and in turn food sources shrink for birds who feed on those invertebrates. It's a quick little chain reaction. One example of an invasive Sporobolus alterniflorus hybrid is that of Sporobolus anglicus. Anglicus. Okay, look at that cute little guy. Um, S. anglicus is a fertile polyploid, which is a condition in which the cells of an organism have more than one pair of homologous chromosomes. Most species whose cells have nuclei eukaryotes, are diploid, meaning they have two complete sets of chromosomes. Okay, uh, is a furry polyploid derived from the hybrid of S. alterniflorus and Townsendi, um, or alterniflorus and Maritimus, first found when American S. alterniflorus was introduced to southern England in about 1870, and came into contact with the local native S. maritimus. S. anglica has a variety of traits that allow it to outcompete native plants, including a high saline tolerance and the ability to perform photosynthesis at lower temperatures more productively than other similar plants. It can grow on a wider range of sediments than other species of the genus Sporobolus, and can survive inundation in salt water for longer periods of time. S. anglicus has since spread throughout Northwest Europe and following introduction for erosion control, Eastern North America. That's crazy. So I guess on early trading boats in the, uh, maybe not super early, but in the 1870s, uh, some seeds must have hitched a ride and pollinated or whatever crossed, crossed itself with some English grasses, and yeah, now you've got a, a grass that's both native to England, but also extremely resistant to salt and can photosynthesize more regularly. And now you've got an invasive species. And man, spread through Northwest Europe and Eastern North America. That's crazy. You made a super plant there without even trying. The world's largest invasion of Sporobolus alterniflorus is in China, where plants from multiple North American locations were intentionally planted starting in 1979 with the intention of providing shore protection and sediment capture. The invasion has spread to over 34,000 hectare acres in 10 provinces and Hong Kong. Bummer, I guess, unless they're still happy with it. I don't know. It's still dis uh, it, disruptive, though, because it's saying that this will um, uh, starve out invertebrate. Um, or, sorry, it'll uh, overgrow their it, it, the invertebrate um, habitat, and then birds won't have food. So not good, ultimately. We're disrupting the, the ecosystem there. In Willapa Bay, Willapa, sorry if I say that wrong, Willapa, I don't care about that notification. Of uh, Washington State, Sporobolus alterniflorus was probably an accidental introduction during oyster transplants during the 19th century and may have dispersed from there to other parts of the state. At its peak of infestation in 2003, it covered approximately 3,000 hectares, more than 8,500 acres, spread across an area of 8,000 hectares or uh, 20,000 acres. As of 2016, the infestation has been reduced to less than three solid hectare acres or seven acres. I don't know why it's giving the um, 
conversion to acres here when like it's mentioned hectare acres other places whatever in california four species of exotic sporobolus uh that being s alterniflorus where we are now s densiflora and s patens and s anglicus which was the um hybrid uh yeah, the, the hybrid in England, I think. S. anglicus is a fertile polyploid derived from the hybrid of Alterniflorus and Townsendi or Alterniflorus maritimus. Okay. So yeah, in California, these four exotic sporobolas have been introduced to the San Francisco Bay region. Sporobolus Alterniflorus is well established in San Francisco Bay and has had the greatest impact on uh, impact of all the cord grasses in San Francisco Bay. It was introduced in 1973 by the Army Corps of Engineers in an attempt to reclaim marshland and was spread and replanted around the bay in further restoration projects. It demonstrated an ability to outcompete the native S. foliosa and to potentially eliminate it from the San Francisco Bay. Wait, so are they trying to? What? I'm... I'm not understanding this well, or at least. So it had the greatest impact. Are we we using great as in like grand or great as in good? Because they intentionally put it there to yeah, as a restoration project and to outcompete the native. Were, were they trying to outcompete the native plant and eliminate? Uh, the sporobolus foliosus. Why? Why would they try to get rid of the native plant? I don't know. If, if if by any chance people end up listening to this video, and if you know why they would have tried to, like, I I don't know if I'm getting the gist right there that they are intentionally eliminating the native plant, or if they're like, oh snap, we just wanted to restore these wetlands, marshlands rather, and now the native plant is dying off. Huh. I have no idea what to take from that. Like, what's that, good or bad? Anyway, Sporobolus alterniflorus has also been found to hybridize with S. foliosa, producing offspring Sporobolus alterniflorus cross S. foliosa. Great. What a good name. That, uh, that may be an even greater threat than the S. alterniflorus by itself. So now they're calling it a threat. Okay, so <laughs> is it a good idea or a bad idea? Like, are they saying, oh, snap? The hybrid can physically modify the environment to the detriment of native species, which it sounded like they were trying to do. Why would they have planted this non-native species in the first place? Were we just that dumb in the 70s? Whatever. Um... Detriment of the native species and the hybrid populations have spread into creeks, bays, and more remote coastal locations. The hybrids produce enormous amounts of pollen, which swamp the stigmas, swamp the stigmas of the native S. foliosa flowers to produce even larger numbers of, of hybrid offspring, leaving the effective native sporobola species little chance to produce unhybridized offspring. The hybrids also produce much larger numbers of fertile seeds than the native sporobola species and are producing a hybrid population that, left unchecked, can increase not only in population size, but also in its rate of population growth. The hybrids may also be able to fertilize themselves, which the native sporobola species cannot do, thus increasing the spread of the hybrid swarm even further. As of 2014, eradication efforts had reduced the infestation of S. alterniflorus, hybr uh, S. alterniflorus and hybrids in the San Francisco area, Bay Area by 96%. That's pretty good. Uh, from 323 net, net hectare acres at its peak to 12 net hectare acres. Taller than either of the parent species, the hybrid provides good shelter to Ridgeway's yeah, Ridgeway's Rail, an occasional roadblock to its eradication. Ridgeway's Rail. Oh, it's bird. So, okay. 
if I, well, actually, let me finish this and then talk. Several means of control and eradication have been employed against Sporobolus alterniflorus, where it has become a pest. Hand pulling is ineffective because even small rhizome fragments that inevitably break off and get left in the soil are capable of sending up new shoots. Imzapur, Imzapur, uh, an herbicide, is approved for aquatic use and is, I hope it's rightfully approved, and is used effectively in Washington and California to kill it. In Willapa Bay, Willapa, I don't know, leaf hopper bugs were employed to kill the plants, which threatened the oyster industry there. Good. But this method did not contain the invasion. Surveys by air, land, and sea are conducted in infested and threatened areas near San Francisco to determine the spread of, of sporobolus species. So these leafhopper bugs, Prokele, Prokelesia marginata. Great, not really any information there. It's a species of Delphicid plant hoppers. Okay, they kind of look like that. Okay, they kind of... Oh, is that... Um, uh, what's the, the white shoot? Um, my brother has a lime tree that had something that looked kind of like that. What's it called? Not plank. It's some like weird... Weird name. Shoot. <sighs> white species. White plant killer. Oh, what? Uh, bug. Pest. No, it's not mealy bugs. Shoot, why can I not remember this? It's going to drive me crazy. Mm. White plant pest. It's something st scale, scale. It's scale. That's what I'm thinking of. I don't think that is scale, but I don't know. Scale. Okay, um, we're not going to read this plant hopper article. We're we're too deep. I need to get back to the pea crab. That's where this all started from. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like in the 70s, we were trying to restore the uh, marshlands of the San Francisco Bay Area. And in doing so, we introduced a non-native species, quite intentionally, but it ended up uh, hybridizing and overtaking the native species detrimentally. And now we're trying to undo our actions. <laughs> and in doing that, we introduced a <laughs> we are so dumb freaking screw people you know we uh introduced leaf hopper bugs which threatened the oyster industry and that didn't even work <laughs> why are we so dumb like i i hope this im im uh, i hope this herbicide is not actually toxic. It says it was approved for usage there. I hope it actually is good. But man, humans, what is up? Crazy, crazy. Sporobolus artiniflorus. Okay, that's got to be it from that. Let's see what we can do next. Um, yeah, I need to. I need to get out of this. There, there's just so much different stuff that I could do it on. Kayla, P crab. Here we're back to. Back to the start. I really want to figure out what a C squirt is. How long is this article? Oh, mother. Okay, it's a long one. I'm not going to do that whole thing, but we'll see if I can get started a little.